According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way that a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. Cut to Barry's room where he's picking out what to wear. Yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black. Oh, black and yellow. Yes, let's shake it up a little. Barry uses honey from a dispenser to style his hair, rinse his mouth, and then applies it to his armpits. Barry, breakfast is ready. Coming. Oh, hang on a second. Hello. Barry, Adam, can you believe this is happening? I can't believe it. I'll pick you up. Looking sharp, flies downstairs. Barry, why don't you use the stairs? Your father paid good money for those. Sorry, I'm excited. Here's the graduate. We're very proud of you, son. And a perfect report card. All bees. Very proud. Touches Barry's hair. Ma, I got a thing going on here. Ah, you got some lint on your fuzz. Oh, that's me. Wave to us. We'll be in row 118,000. Bye, flies off. Barry, I told you stop flying in the house. Barry drives his car to pick up his classmate. Adam's outside his house, reading the Hive Today newspaper. The front page headline reads, Frisbee hits Hive, internet down. B, I heard sound, then wow. Hey, Adam. Hey, Barry, is that fuzz gel? A little. It's a special day, finally graduating. Never thought I'd make it. Yeah, three days of grade school, three days of high school. Those were so awkward. Three days of college. I'm glad I took off one day in the middle and just hitchhiked around the hive. You did come back different. The bee calls out as they drive past. Hi, Barry. Hey, Artie, growing mustache. Looks good. Hey, did you hear about Frankie? Yeah. You going to his funeral? No, I'm not going to his funeral. Everybody knows you sting someone, you die. You don't waste it on a squirrel. He was such a hothead. Yeah, I guess he could have just gotten out of the way. They make various noises as the car goes up and down some hills and does a loop on the road. Whoa! Oh! I love this incorporating an amusement park right into our regular day. I guess that's what they say. I guess that's why they say we don't need vacations. They arrive, fly, and take their seats. Boy, quite a bit of pomp under the circumstances. Well, Adam, today we are men. We are B-men. Amen. Hallelujah, bumping each other. Ah! Students, faculty, distinguished bees, please welcome Dean Buswell. Dean Buswell walks onto the stage and taps the microphone. Welcome, New Hive City, graduating class of... Presses a button to change the timer on the podium from 9 o'clock to 9.15. 9.15, and that concludes our graduation ceremonies. Students cheer, throw their caps into the air as helmets are placed on their heads. And begins your career at Hunex Industries. Are we going to pick our jobs today? I heard it's just orientation. Huh, whoa, heads up, here we go. The stands for Winger University the students are sitting in begin converting into tram seating. Keep your hands and antennas inside the tram at all times. Flies down into the tram as it starts moving and repeats it in Spanish. Matenga sus manos. You get it. Wonder what it's going to be like. A little scary. He and Barry mimic shivering and makes, make, making scared noises. Welcome to Hunex, the division of Hanesco and part of the Hexagon group. This is it. Wow. Tram moves into the factory floor. Wow. We know that you, as a bee, have worked your whole life to get to the point where you can work for your whole life. Honey begins when our valiant pollen jocks bring the nectar to the hive. Our top secret formula is automatically color corrected, scent adjusted, and bubble contoured into the soothing sweet syrup with its distinctive golden glow you know as honey. Tour guide grabs a beaker of honey as they drive by and tosses it to the group, which bounces it around towards the back. That girl was hot. She's my cousin. She is. Yes, we're all cousins. Right, you're right. At Hunex, we also constantly strive to improve every aspect of bee existence. These bees are stress testing a new helmet technology. Behind a display window, a bee puts on a helmet, then runs back and forth as levers holding a rolled up magazine, fly swatter, and shoe move down to try and hit him. He is hit by the magazine, dodges the fly swatter, but then hit by the boot and again by all three, followed by being sprayed with aerosol from two cans. He signals he's okay, but is flattened by the fly swatter, magazine, and shoe converging to strike him together. He signals he's, o he's still okay by poking his arm up through a hole in the fly swatter and giving another thumbs up. 
The tram riders applaud. Ooh, what do you think he makes? Not enough. And here we have our last advancement, the Krellman. Wow, what does that do? Catches that little strand of honey that hangs after you pour it. Saves us millions. A Krellman worker waves and Adam waves back. Uh-huh. Can anyone work on the Krellman? Of course. Most bee jobs are small ones. But bees know that every small job, if it's done well, means a lot. But choose carefully because you'll stay in the job that you pick for the rest of your life. The same job for the rest of your life? I didn't know that. What's the difference, huh? And you'll be happy to know that bees as a species haven't had one day off in 27 million years. Woo. So you'll just work us to death? We'll sure try. Everyone laughs while Barry looks uncomfortable. The tram converts into a boat that flows down a log flume style ramp with honey in it, then converts back into a wheeled tram at the end. With the tour over, Adam and Barry head home. Adam jumps with excitement. Wow, that blew my mind. What's the difference? Adam, how could you say that? One job forever? That's an insane choice to have to make. Well, I'm relieved. Now we only have to make one decision in life. But Adam, how could they have never told us that? Barry, why would you question anything? We're bees. We're the most perfectly functioning society on earth. A filling station attendant yells at a bee for putting the honey nozzle into his own mouth. Yeah, but Adam, do you, did you ever think that maybe things work a little too well around here? Like what? Give me one example. Both stop in the middle of an intersection. The traffic adjusts to the drive around them. I don't know, but you know what I'm talking about. Please clear the gate. Royal Nectar Force on approach. Royal Nectar for Force on, on approach. Approach. Wait a second. Check it out. Hey, those are pollen jocks. Wow. Pollen jocks fly into the hive and land. I've never seen them this close. They know what it's like to go outside the hive. Yeah, but some of them don't come back. Two lady bees wave at the jocks and call out, Hey, jocks. Hi, jocks. The pollen is removed from the jocks and collected into storage capsules marked nectar, then trucked away. A general flies over to welcome them. You guys did great. You're monsters. You're sky freaks. I love it. I love it. I wonder where those guys have just been. I don't know. Their day's not planned. Outside the hive, flying who knows where, doing who knows what. You can't just decide one day to be a pollen jock. You have to be bred for that. <laughs> right. Pollen begins drifting around them. Look at that. That's more pollen than you and I will ever see in a lifetime. It's just a status symbol. I think bees make a too big a deal out of it. Perhaps, unless you're wearing it and the ladies see you wearing it. The same two lady bees giggle at being talked about by Barry. Those ladies, they aren't those our cousins too? Distant, distant. Three pollen jocks observe them. Look at these two. A couple of hive harries. Let's have some fun with them. It must be so dangerous being a pollen jock. Oh yeah, one time a bear had me pinned up against a mushroom. He had one paw on my throat and with the other, he was slapping my back and slapping me back and forth across the face. Oh my. I never thought I'd knock him out. Two at him. And what were you doing during all of this? Obviously, I was trying to alert the authorities. I can autograph that if you want. A little gutsy out there today, wasn't it, comrades? Yeah, gutsy. Yeah, we're going to hit a sunflower patch about six miles from here tomorrow. Six miles, huh? Barry, it's a puddle jump for us, but uh, maybe you're not up for it. Maybe I am. You are not. We're going 0900 at J-Gate. Whoa, what do you think, Buzzy Boy? Are you B enough? I might be. <laughs> Get it? B? It all depends on what 0900 means. Later, back at home that night, Barry is on the balcony looking out at the hive. Hey, Hudex. Oh, Dad, you surprised me. <laughs> Have you decided what you're interested in, son? Well, there's not a lot of choice, or there's a lot of choices, but you only get one. <laughs> Dad, do you ever get bored doing the same job every day? Son, let me tell you something about stirring. You grab that stick and you just move it around and you stir it around. You get yourself into a rhythm. It's a beautiful thing. You know, Dad, the more I think about it, maybe the honey feel just isn't right for me. And you were thinking of what? Making balloon animals? That's a bad job for a guy with a stinger. Well, no. Janet, your son's not sure. He wants to get into honey. Oh, Barry, you are so funny sometimes. I'm not trying to be funny. You're not funny? You're going into honey. Our son, the stir. <laughs> You're going to be a stir? No one's listening to me. Wait till you see the sticks I have for you. I could say anything I want right now. I'm going to get an ant tattoo. Oh, let's open some fresh honey and celebrate. Maybe I'll pierce my thorax. Mom and dad start walking away. Dad raises his glass, glass and says, To honey, shave my antennae. My antenna. The thing. 
So funny. Shack up with a grasshopper. Get a gold tooth and start calling everybody dog. I'm so proud. Barry and Adam arrive the next morning at the job selection booth. I can't believe we're starting work today. Today's the day. Come on, all the good jobs will be gone. Unenthused, Barry says, yeah, right. Dean Buswell at his second job, located at the desk in front of the Hunnex job placement board. Pollen counting, stunt B, pouring, stir, front desk, hair removal. Is it still available? Hold on, two left, and one of them's yours. Congratulations, son. Step to the side, please. Yeah, what'd you get? Picking the crud out. Whoa, that is stellar. Wow, couple of newbies. Yes, sir, our first day and we are ready. Well, step up and make your choice to Barry. Uh, do you wanna go first? Oh, uh, no, you go. Oh my, what's available? Restroom attendant's always open, and not for the reason you think. Any chance of getting onto the Crumman, sir? Sure, you're on. Status for Crumman worker changes suddenly. Oh, I'm sorry, the Crumman just closed out. Oh, wax monkey's always open, and the Crumman just opened up again. What happened? Well, whenever a bee dies, that's an opening. See that? He's dead, dead, another dead one. Deady, deadified, two more dead. Dead from the neck up, dead from the neck down. But that's life. Oh, this is hard. Heating, cooling, stunt bee, poor stir, humming inspector, number seven, link coordinator, stripe supervisor, antenna, ball polisher, might wrangler. Barry, what do you think I should? Barry? Barry! All right, we've got the sunflower patch in quadrant nine, geranium window box on Sutton Place. Adam calls Barry. What happened to you? Where are you? I'm going out. Out, out where? Out there. Oh, no. I have to before I go to work for the rest of my life. You're going to die. You're crazy. Hello? Oh, another call coming in. Barry hangs up as Adam says again, you're crazy. If anyone's feeling brave, there's a Korean deli on 83rd that gets a roses today. Hey, guys. Well, look at that. Isn't that the kid we saw yesterday? Hold it, son. Flight deck's restricted. It's okay, Lou. We're going to take him up. Yeah? Really? Feeling lucky, are you? Holds clipboard for Barry. Sign here, here, just initial that, thank you. Okay, you got a rain advisory today, and as you all know, bees cannot fly in the rain, so be careful. As always, watch your brooms, hockey sticks, dogs, birds, bears, and bats. Also, I got a couple of reports of root beer being poured on us. Murphy's in a home because of it, just babbling like a cicada. That's awful. And a reminder for all you rookies, B laws number one, or B law number one, absolutely no talking to humans. All right, launch positions. The pollen jocks begin chanting buzz, 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 buzz over and over as they change positions. Black and yellow, hello, you ready for this hot shot? Yeah, yeah, bring it on. The pollen jocks begin calling out their flight preparations. Wind, check. Antenna, check. Nectar pack, check. Wings, check. Stinger, check. Skid out of my shorts, check. Okay, ladies, let's move it out. Flight crew helps the jocks get their wings started. Pound those petunias, you striped stem suckers. All of you, drain those flowers. All depart. Wow, I'm out. I can't believe I'm out. So blue. Woohoo! I feel so fast and free. They fly amidst a bunch of colorful kites, and Barry flies through one. Box kite. Wow. Whoa. They fly through a field of flowers. Flowers. This is Blue Leader. We have Rose's visual. Bringing it around 30 degrees and hold. Rose's! 30 degrees, Roger. Bringing it around. The squadron lands. The jocks fire their nectar packs and long tubes inject into the flowers and suck up nectar. Stand to the side, kid. It's got a bit of a kick. Oh, that is one nectar collector. You ever seen pollination up close? No, sir. I pick up some pollen here, sprinkle it over here, maybe a dash over there, a pinch on that one. You see that? It's a little bit of magic, ain't it? Wow, that's amazing. Why do we do that? That's pollen power, kid. More pollen, more flowers, more nectar, more honey for us. Cool. The squadron flies over a pond. Barry sees his reflection in the water, reenacting the hippogriff scene from Harry Potter, which itself was a shot-for-shot reenactment of the eagle scene from Rescuers Down Under. I'm picking up a lot of bright yellow. Could be daisies. Don't we need those? Copy that visual. Hold on. One of these flowers seems to be on the move. Say that again. Are you reporting a moving flower? Affirmative. The three bees land to check out the objects, which turn out to be tennis balls. In the distance, that was on the line. This is the coolest. What is it? I don't know, but I'm loving this color. Ah, it smells good. Not like a flower, but I like it. Yeah, fuzzy. Chemically. Careful, guys. It's a little grabby. Barry lands on one of the objects and hugs it. My sweet lord of bees. Hey, candy brain, get off of there. Problem. 
a woman picks up the tennis ball Barry is stuck to and walks back to the serving line. Guys, this could be bad. Affirmative. As the woman bounces the ball a few times, Barry's still stuck to it and says on each bounce, very close, gonna hurt, mama's little boy. You are way out of position, rookie. Barry screams as the woman hits the ball, coming in at you like a missile. In slow motion, help me. You know, I don't think these are flowers. Should we tell him? I, th I think he knows. Barry screaming, what is this? Match point. You can't just start packing up, honey, because I believe you're about to eat it. Jackson clears his throat, distracting Ken, causing Ken to hit the ball, sending it high into the air and into the street. What? Oh, no, you cannot be serious. Yowzer. Barry gets sucked into the engine compartment of a passing car into the engine before escaping through a hole and into the car's air conditioning system where he sees a dead bug stuck to the filter. Ew, gross. A woman in the car turns on the air conditioner, blowing Barry into the car's cabin where she sees him. There's a bee in the car, she screams at Barry. Barry screams at her. Everyone except the young girl screams back to her husband. Do something, I'm driving. Hi, bee, he's back here, he's gonna sting me. Nobody move. If you don't move, he won't sting you. Freeze. Everybody stays still, including Barry, who hovers in the same spot. He blinked. Grandma gets out a can of hairspray and sprays it on Barry. Spray him, Granny! What are you doing? Barry escapes out of the roof vent. Wow, the tension level out here is unbelievable. I gotta get home. Something moves down past him, very close and fast. Whoa! Barry sees rain starting to fall heavily. Can't fly in the rain, can't fly in rain, can't fly in rain. A raindrop hits him, but before he can recover, another one hits him. Mayday, mayday, be going down! Barry sees a window ledge and barely makes it there, then crawls through the open window. Ken, could you close the window, please? Huh? Oh, hey, check out my new resume. I made it into a fold-out brochure, you see? Fold-out. Oh, no, more humans. I don't need this. Tries to fly out the window, but bounces off and... Or, b b he just bounces off of it. Oof, ow. What was that? Tries again. Maybe this time. This time. This time. This time. This time. This, this, this... Drapes! Taps a glass. This is diabolical. Ken showing off his resume. It's fantastic. It's got all my special skills, even my top 10 favorite movies. What's your number one, Star Wars? No, I got, I got, I don't go for that. Kind of stuff, you know? No wonder we're not supposed to talk to them. They're out of their minds. When I walk out of a job interview, they're flabbergasted. They can't believe the things I say. There's the sun. Maybe that's a way out. Flies towards the light near the ceiling. I don't remember the sun having a big 75 on it. Bounces off of it and starts falling, landing in a bowl of chip dip. I gotta tell ya, I, pr I predicted a global warming. I could feel it getting hotter. At first, I thought it was just me. Andy scoops up some of the dip with the tortilla chip, including Barry, and brings it towards his mouth. Wait, stop, B! Kill it, kill it! Ken grabs something to kill it. Stand back, these are winter boots. Vanessa says, wait, don't kill him! You know I'm allergic to them. That thing could kill me. Well, why does his life have any less value than yours? Vanessa places a lass over Barry. Why does his life have any less value than mine? Is that your statement? I'm going to stop with the Ken voice because it's getting irritating. I'm just saying all life has value. You don't know what he's capable of feeling. Vanessa rips Ken's resume in half and slides it under the glass. My brochure! Vanessa carries the glass with Barry inside over to the window and releases him, all while maintaining oddly intimate eye contact. There you go, little guy. I'm not scared of him, but yeah, it's an allergic thing. Hey, why don't you put that on your resume brochure? It's not funny. My whole face could puff up. Hmm, make it one of your special skills. You know, knocking someone out is a special skill. Later, as the rain stops and the sun comes back out. Right. Bye, Vanessa. Thanks. Vanessa, next week, yogurt night? Uh, y yeah, sure, Ken. You know, whatever. You could put carob chips on there. Bye. Supposed to be less calories or something? Bye. The last of her guests have left. She shuts the door and begins clean up. <sighs> I gotta say something. She saved my life. I've got something to say. All right, here it goes. Barry flies back into her house through the almost closed window and stops in front of a can of bumblebee chunk light tuna as Vanessa walks by, stopping right in line with the mascot. He starts to walk away and looks back, says, huh, and turns back around to look at the mascot and says, nah. 
as he dismisses the picture and continues walking. Barry resumes flying and lands on a postcard from Coney Island taped to the refrigerator, again in a position where Vanessa doesn't notice him. What would I say? I could really get in trouble. It's B law. You're not supposed to talk to a human. I can't believe I'm doing this. Begins debating with himself. I've got to. Oh, I can't do it. Come on. No. Yes. Do it. I can't. How should I start it? You like jazz? No, that's not good. Here she comes. Speak, you fool. Um, hi. Vanessa gasps and drops the dishes. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're talking. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm so you're talking. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. It's fine. It's just, I, I know I'm dreaming. I don't recall going to bed. Well, you know, I'm sure this is very disconcerting. Yeah, I mean, this is a this is a this surprise to me. I mean, you're a bee. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm a bee. And, uh, you, you know, I'm not supposed to be doing this, but Vanessa makes a small, oh, and uh-huh, noises while Barry's talking. They were they were trying to kill me. And if it wasn't for you, I mean, I had to thank you. It's It's just the way I was raised. Vanessa grabs a fork and stabs herself in the hand, then cries out. Oh, that was a little weird. I'm talking to a bee. Yeah, I'm talking to a bee. Anyway, and the bee is talking to me. Um, I just want to say I'm grateful and I'm going to leave now. Wait, 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 wait. How did you learn to do that? What? The, 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 the talking thing. Oh, same way you did, I guess. Mama, Dada, honey, you pick it up. <laughs> that's, that's very funny. Yeah, bees are funny. If we didn't laugh, we'd cry with what we have to deal with. Anyway, can I uh get you something? Like what? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Coffee? Well, uh, I, I don't want to put you out unless you're making it anyway. Oh, it's no trouble. It takes two minutes. Really? It's just coffee. I hate to impose. Don't be ridiculous. Anyway, I, I, actually, I would I would love a cup. Hey, you want a little rum cake? I really shouldn't. Have a little rum cake. No, 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 I can't. Oh, come on. You know, I'm trying to lose a couple micrograms here. Where? Well, these stripes don't help. You look great. I, I don't know if you know anything about fashion. Vanessa walks away and begins pouring coffee onto the floor, a coffee cup in her other hand. Are you all right? No. Fade to Vanessa and Barry on a roof terrace, talking and having coffee. He's making the tie in the cab as they're flying up Madison, so he finally gets there. Uh-huh. He runs up into the steps of the church. The wedding is on. Yeah? And he says, watermelon? I thought you said Guatemalan. Uh-huh. Why would I marry a watermelon? Barry laughs. Vanessa is more confused than amused. Barry gestures, indicating his joke is done. Oh, is that a bee joke? Yeah, that's kind of the stuff that we do. Yeah, different. So anyway, what are you going to do, Barry? About work? I don't know. I want to do my part for the hive, but I I can't do it the way they want. I know how you feel. You do? Sure. My parents wanted me to be a lawyer or a doctor, but I want to be a florist. Really? My only interest is flowers. Our new queen was just elected with that same campaign slogan. Oh, Huh. Anyway, you see, if you look there, there's my hive right there. You can see it. Oh, you're in Sheep Meadow. Yes. You know the turtle pond? Yeah, I'm right off of that. Oh, no way. I know that area. Do you know I lost a toe ring there once? Behind them, a janitor comes onto the roof and begins working on replacing a light bulb. Really? Yes. Why do girls put rings on their toes? Well, why not? I don't know. It's like putting a hat on your knee. Maybe I'll try that. You all right, ma'am? Realizing how it must look, talking to herself. Oh, yeah. Fine, just having two cups of coffee, she laughs. Vanessa and Barry share a little quiet time. She glances aside and catches him staring smittenly. Actual line from the official audio description on Netflix. Oh, ahem. anyways, this has been great. Thanks for the coffee. Oh yeah, it's no trouble. Sorry I couldn't finish it. If I did, I'd be up for the rest of my life. Are you, um, can I take this, uh, take a piece of this with me? Sure, here, have a crumb. She passes one to Barry on her fingertip. Oh, thanks. Yeah. All right, well then, I guess I'll see you around or not. Or, okay, Barry. And thank you so much again for before. Oh, that, that was nothing. Well, not nothing, but anyway. Barry extends his hand. Vanessa touches it with his finger and they gingerly shake. The janitor looks over and continues tightening the bulb in the socket. It shorts, causing him to lose his balance and fall backwards. The next day at the Hunnex building, Hurricane survival testing is in progress. A bee wearing a parachute is in a wind tunnel. This can't possibly work. Well, he's all set to go. We may as well try it via intercom. Okay, Dave, pull the chute. Dave pulls the cord and is immediately blown backwards. He slides down the wall and shakily gives a thumbs up signal. Barry and Adam walk by the outside of the testing chamber. 
Sounds amazing. Oh, it was amazing. It was the scariest, happiest moment of my life. Humans, humans. I can't believe you were with humans. Giant, scary humans. What were they like? Huge and crazy. They talk crazy. They eat crazy giant things. They drive around real crazy. And do they try and kill you like on TV? Well, some of them, but some of them don't. How'd you get back, poodle? Look at you, you did it. And I'm glad you saw whatever you wanted to see out there. You had your experience and now you're back. You can pick out your job and everything can be normal. Well, 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 I met somebody. You met somebody? Was she B-ish? Mm, not a wasp. Your parents will kill you. No, 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 not a wasp. Spider? You know, I'm not attracted to the spiders. I know to everyone else it's like the hottest thing with eight legs and all. I, I can't get by the face. Barry grimaces and makes a noise. You know it, me too, Barry, me too. So, uh, who is she? Uh, she's, um, um, a human? Oh, no, 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 that didn't happen. You didn't do that. That is B-Law. You wouldn't break a B-Law. Her name's Vanessa. Oh, oh boy. She's so, oh, nice. And she's a florist. Oh, no, 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 no. You're dating a human florist? Well, well we're not dating. Well, you're flying outside the hive. You're talking to human beings that attack our homes and with power washers in the mateys. That's one eighth of a stick of dynamite. She saved my life and she understands me. This is over. Barry pulls out the rum cake crumb. Eat this, pushes it into Adam's face. This is not over. What was that? They call it a crumb that was so stinging stripey. And that's not even what they eat. That just falls off of what they eat. Do you know what a Cinnabon is? No, it's bread. Come in here. Opens the door to the office where he works and guides Barry inside. And cinnamon, be quiet. And frosting, they heat it up, sit down really hot listen to me we are not them we're us there's us and there's them yes but who can deny the heart that is yearning there's no yearning stop yearning listen to me you've got to start thinking b my friend another b joins in thinking b and another joins in thinking b all b's in the office begin chanting thinking b thinking b thinking b outside his house barry sits on a raft and his family's hexagon shaped honey pool legs dangling into the honey mom and dad approach wearing cabanets hype outfits sun shining behind them there he is he's in the pool you know what your problem is barry i've got to start thinking b barry how much longer is this gonna go for it's been three days i don't understand why you're not working well i've got a lot of big life decisions i'm thinking about what life you have no life you have no job you're barely a bee Ugh. would it kill you to just make a little honey Barry rolls off the raft and sinks into the pool. Barry, come out from under there. Your, fa your, yeah, your father's talking to you. Martin, would you talk to him? Barry, I'm talking to you. Barry keeps swimming downward through the honey, which clears and leads him to an imaginary park where Vanessa is waiting for him, reclining on a picnic basket. Sugar Sugar by the Archies is playing in the background. She swats a mosquito that lands on her leg, then looks at Barry for his reaction. Both are surprised, but then laugh about it. You coming, said in a sultry way. Got everything, all set. She gets into a one-man ultralight plane with a black and yellow paint job and puts on her helmet. She and the plane are now Barry's size. You go, I'll get, I'll catch up. Don't be too long, the plane takes off. Barry soon catches up and they fly together. Watch this. The plane does a loop, trailing red smoke that forms a heart, then crashes into the side of a rock pile, bursting into flames. Barry yelling in anguish, Vanessa! His cry changes the bubbles escaping his mouth. Barry breaks the surface of the pool, gasping for air. We're still here, Barry, his dad says. I told you not to yell at him. He doesn't respond when you yell at him. Then why are you yelling at me? Because you don't listen. Ah, I'm not listening to this. Barry dries himself and puts on his sweater. sweater. Sorry, Mom, I've got to go. Where are you going? Nowhere, I'm meeting a friend. A girl, is this why you can't decide? Bye, I hope she's B-ish. Vanessa exits her floor shop, flipping the sign over and locking the door. He sees the Tournament of Roses parade poster. So they have a huge parade of just flowers every year in Pasadena? Oh, to be in the Tournament of Roses, that's every floor stream, up on a float, surrounded by flowers, crowds cheering. Wow, a tournament. Do the roses actually compete in athletic events? No. All right, I've got one. How come you don't fly everywhere? It's exhausting. Hmm. Why don't you run everywhere? Isn't that faster? Yeah, okay, I see, I see. All right, your turn. Ah, TiVo. You can't just freeze like TV? That's insane. What, you don't have anything like that? We have 
you know, Hivo, but it's a disease. It's horrible, horrible disease. Oh my. They turn a corner onto a busier street. People start swatting at Barry. Dumb bees. You might just want to sting all those jerks. We really try not to sting. It's usually fatal for us. So you really have to watch your temper. They enter a supermarket. Oh yeah, very carefully. You kick a wall, take a walk, write an angry letter and throw it out. You work through it like any emotion. Anger, jealousy, lust. Barry lands on cardboard boxes in the aisle. A stock boy hits him with a rolled up advertisement. Oh my goodness, are you okay? Yeah, woo. -hoo. Vanessa to Hector, the stack boy. What is wrong with you? It's a bug. Well, he's not bothering anybody. Get out of here, you creep. She slaps him with the advertisement and he leaves muttering. Barry shakes off the hit. What was that, a pick and save circular? Yeah, it was, how did you know? It felt like about 10 pages. 75 is pretty much our limit. Boy, you really got that down to a science. Oh, we have to, I lost a cousin to Italian Vogue. I'll bet. Barry stops when he sees the rows of honey jars. What in the name of mighty Hercules is this? How did this get here? Cute bee, Golden Blossom, Ray Liotta, Private Select? Is he that actor? I've never heard of him. Why is he here? For people, we eat it. Why? He gestures around the market. You don't have enough food of your own? Well, yes, we, how do you even get it? Well, bees make it. I know who makes it and it's hard to make. There's heating and cooling and stirring. You need a whole Krellman thing. That's organic. It's our organic. It's just honey, Barry. Just what? Bees don't know about this. This is stealing, a lot of stealing. You've taken our homes, our schools, our hospitals. This is all we have and it's on sale. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. I'm gonna get to the bottom of all of this. Barry rips off the label from a jar of Ray Liotta private select honey. Later, Barry's infiltrating the supermarket loading dock by covering up his yellow stripes with a magic marker and putting on war paint. Hector's opening more boxes of honey jars. A man says, hey Hector, you almost done? Almost. Barry steps in some honey. Hector stops and turns around. He is here, I sense it. He grabs his, his box cutter as Barry hides. Barry hides behind a box once again. Talking loud to the open room as he opens a jar of honey from a box. Well, I guess I'll go home now and just leave this nice honey out with no one around. Pretends to walk away. Barry steps out into the light. You're busted box boy. Ah, I knew I heard something so you can talk. Barry flies at him, Stinger first, backing him up against the wall. Hector drops the knife. Oh, I can talk, and now you're gonna start talking. Where are you getting all the sweet stuff? Who's your supplier? I don't know who you're talking about. I thought we were all friends. The last thing we want to do is upset any of you bees. Hector grabs a push pin. Barry begins fencing with his Stinger. Ha, you're too late. It's ours now. You, sir, have crossed the wrong sword. You, sir, are about to be lunch for my iguana, Ignacio. The flight, the flight, what is wrong with me? The fight continues. They cross swords and get nose to nose. Where is the honey coming from? Barry knocks the pushpin away and put his stinger up to Hector's nose. Tell me where. Hector points to a truck. Honey farms, it comes from honey farms. Barry flies after the departing truck, dodging a bus, taxis, and a messenger on a bicycle. One driver yells at the manager, crazy person. Barry continues his pursuit using the elastic strap on a bicycle messenger's helmet to launch himself towards the truck. He lands on a windshield, pressed against it by the wind. He sees himself surrounded by dead bugs, then works his way around them. Oh my, what horrible thing has happened here? Look at these faces. They never knew what hit them, and now they're on the road to nowhere. A mosquito opens his eyes. Psst, just keep still. What? You're not dead? Do I look dead? Hey man, they will wipe anything that moves. Now, where are you headed? To Honey Farms, I'm going, I got something huge here. I'm going to Alaska, moose blood, crazy stuff, blows your head off. I'm going to Tacoma. Barry to a fly, what about you? He really is dead. All right, the driver's hand moves towards the windshield wiper lever. Uh oh, what is that? Oh no, it's a wiper, triple blade, triple blade. Jump on, it's your only chance, B. They hang onto the wiper as it moves back and forth. Moose Blood yells at the driver through the glass. Why does everything have to be so doggone clean? How much do you people need to see? Open your eyes, stick your head out the window. Inside the cab, the radio's playing. For NPR News in Washington, I'm Carl Cassell. But don't kill no more bugs. He is flung off the wiper as the washer fluid sprays into the windshield. Bee! Moose Blood guy. Barry gets flung off, grabs a hold of the radio antenna. A cricket flies by, or a, 
Yeah, Cricket flying by grabs a hold of the antenna. Both scream simultaneously. You hear something? Like what? Like tiny screaming? Turn off the radio. The driver turns off the radio and the antenna retracts. As it lowers, the Cricket and Barry work their way to its top. Barry wins and the Cricket has to let go. But then so does Barry and he's sucked into the air horn on the top of the truck. Hey, what's up, B-boy? Hey, blood. Inside the truck horn later during the drive. And it was just an endless row of honey jars as far, as far as the eye could see. Wow. So I'm just assuming wherever this honey truck goes, that's where they're getting it. I mean, that honey's ours. Bees hang tight. Well, we're all jammed in there. It's a close community. Not us, man. We're on our own. Every, every mosquito is on his own. But what if you get in trouble? Trouble? You're a mosquito. You are in trouble. Nobody likes us. They're all just smacking. People see a mosquito. Smack, smack. At least you're out in the world. You must meet a lot of girls. Mosquito girls try to trade up. Get up with a moth, dragonfly. Mosquito girl don't want no mosquito. A blood mobile passes them. Whoa, you have got to be kidding me. Must blue, <laughs> moose blood's about to leave the building. So long, B. He leaves and jumps into the other vehicle, saying to the bugs on its windshield, Hey guys, I knew I'd catch you all down here. Did you bring your crazy straws? At Honey Farms, the truck stops. Barry flies out of the horn and lands on the nose of the truck. Two beekeepers walk around the backside of the gift shop. Barry follows, landing in a tree. Then we throw it in some jars, slap a label on it. It's pretty much pure profit. What is this place? A bee's got a brain the size of a pinhead. They are pinheads. Both laugh and Elmo says, pinhead. Freddy opens his smoker box after they arrive. Hey, check out the new smoker. Oh, sweet. That's the one you want. The Thomas 3000. Smoker? 90 puffs a minute. Semi-automatic, twice the nicotine, all the tar. <laughs> Couple of breaths of this knocks them right out. They make the honey and we make the money. Barry flies onto Freddy's hat and onto the brim. They make the honey and we make the money. Freddy and Elmo walk onward. Freddy opens an apiary box and sprays it with the smoke. Inside, the bees start moaning and gasping. Oh my! Barry flies into the open box as Freddy leaves and makes his way into an apartment. Two bees are just waking up. What's going on? Are you okay? Yeah, it doesn't last too long. How did you two get here? Do you know you're in a fake hive with fake walls? Points to a picture. Our queen was moved here. We have no choice. Barry looks at the picture. This is your queen? That's a man in woman's clothes. That's a, that's a drag queen. The walls separating the apartments are removed, revealing hundreds of them. What is this? Flies through the apartments and out into the open air. He hovers high above a tree, where he sees even more apiary boxes on the farm. He begins taking pictures. Oh no, there's hundreds of them. Bee honey, our honey, it's being brazenly stolen on a massive scale. Back at home, Barry's talking with his parents, Adam and Uncle Carl. This is worse than anything the bears could have done to us, and I intend to do something about it. Oh, Barry, stop. Who told you that humans are taking our honey? That's just a rumor. Do these look like rumors? Barry throws his pictures on the table. That's a conspiracy theory. These are obviously doctored photos. Ugh. Barry, how did you get mixed up in all this? Cause he's been talking to humans. What? Talking to humans? He has a human girlfriend. Oh, Barry. And they make out, make out, Barry. We do not. You wish you could. Whose side are you on? The bees. I dated a cricket once in San Antonio. Man, those crazy legs kept me up all night. Ho chi wa. Barry, this is what you want to do with your life? This is what I want to do for all our lives. Nobody works harder than bees. Dad, I remember you coming home some nights so overworked. You, your hands were still stirring. You couldn't stop them. Yeah, I remember that. To, what right do they have to our hard-earned honey? We're living on two cups a year. They're putting it in lip balm for no reason whatsoever. Even if it's true, Barry, what could one bee do? I'm going to sting them where it really hurts. In the face. No. In the eye. That would really hurt. No. Up the nose. That's a killer. <laughs> no. There's only one place you can sting humans. One place where it really matters. Metro News by Warner Chapel Production Music begins playing. The scene cuts to the title sequence of Hive at Five program. This title sequence shows news events covered in the past. A pollen jock coming in for a crash landing with a stinger that's on fire. A protest about bee beards and a bear destroying a hive. Next are the newscasters. Hive at five, the hive's only full hour action news source. No more bee beards. With Bob Bumble at the anchor desk, weather with Storm Stinger, sports with Buzz Larvae and Jeanette Chung. Good evening, I'm Bob Bumble and I'm Jeanette Chung. Our top story, a Tri-County Bee, Barry Benson is saying he intends to sue the human race for stealing our honey, packaging it and profiting from it illegally. 
broadcast, broadcast shifts again to another studio in the building for B. Larry King Live. Don't forget tomorrow on B. Larry King, we're going to have three former queens all right here in our studio discussing their new book, Classy Ladies, out this week on Hexagon. Tonight, we're talking with Barry Benson. Did you ever think, I'm just a kid from the hive, I can't do this? Larry, bees have never been afraid to change the world. I mean, what about B. Columbus, B. Gandhi, B. Jesus? Well, where I'm from, you wouldn't think of suing humans. We were thinking more like stickball, uh, candy stores. How old are you? Well, I want you to know that the entire bee community is supporting you in this case, which is certain to be the trial of the bee century. Thank you, Larry. You know, they have a Larry King in the human world, too. It's a common name. Next week on Be Larry King. No, I mean, he looks like you, and he has a show with suspenders and different colored dots behind him. Next week on Be Larry King, old guy glasses, and there's quotes along the bottom from the guests you're watching, even though you've just heard of them. Bear next week. They're scary. They're hairy, and they're here to live. Always lean forward, pointy shoulders, squinty eyes. Very Jewish. Nighttime at Vanessa's Flower Shop. Law books in legal forms are piled up. Looking in tennis, you attack at the point of the weakness. But it was my grandmother, Ken. She's 81. Ha, honey, her backhand's a joke. I'm not going to take advantage of that. Quiet, please. Actual work going on here. Is that the same bee? Yes, it is. I'm helping him sue the human race. What? And is the room and sees Ken. Oh, hello. Hello, B. This is Ken. Yeah, I remember you, Timberland. Size 10 and a half. Vabram Soul, I believe. Why does he talk again, hon? Listen, you better go because we're really busy working. But it's our yogurt night. She pushes him out the door. Oh, bye-bye. From outside the now closed door. Why is yogurt night so difficult? Oh, you poor thing. You two have been at this for hours. Yes, and Adam here has been a huge help. Adam is, a, is asleep inside of an empty Cinnabon box, covered in frosting and muttering in his sleep about it. Referring to the coffee. How many sugars? Just one. I try not to use the competition. Oh, so why are you helping me anyway? Bees have good qualities. Si, certo. And it feels good to take my mind off the shop. I don't know why. Instead of flowers, people are giving balloon bouquets now. Yeah, those are great. If you're three and artificial flowers. Oh, those are just to get me psychotic. Yeah, me too. The bent stingers, the pointless pollination. Bees must hate those fake plastic things. There's nothing worse than a daffodil that had that's had work done. Well, maybe this could make up for it a little bit. They exit the flower shop and go to the mailbox. You know, Barry, this lawsuit is a pretty big deal. I guess. Are you sure you want to go through with it? Am I sure? When I'm done with humans, they won't be able to say, Honey, I'm home without paying a royalty. Outside the courthouse, a reporter begins her segment, talking to the camera. Sarah, it's an incredible scene here in the downtown Manhattan where all eyes and ears of the world are anxiously awaiting. Because for the first time in history, we're going to hear for ourselves if a honeybee can actually speak. Inside, Barry, Vanessa, and Adam sit at a table. What if... What have we gotten into here, Barry? I don't know, but it's pretty big, isn't it? I can't believe how many humans don't have to be at work during the day. Hey, you think these billion dollar multinational food companies have good lawyers? Back outside the courthouse, a policeman announces through a megaphone, folks, everybody needs to stay behind the barricade. A very expensive car drives up with a license plate saying, all I buy, and the initials LTM on the hood ornament. The lawyer gets out, sees a bug and steps on it. Inside, Barry shudders. I paused there for a second because I said all I buy, but it's actually alibi. It's a pun, and I missed it until right now. Continuing, what's the matter? I don't know, I just gotta chill. Well, if it isn't the B team, waves a honey packet he picked up from the saucer holding his drink. Any of you boys work on this? <laughs> all rise, the Honorable Judge Bumbleton presiding. All right, case number 4475, Superior Court of New York. Barry B. Benson versus the honey industry is now in session. Mr. Montgomery, you're representing the five major food companies collectively. A privilege? Ah, Mr. Benson, you are representing all bees of the world, inside and outside the courtroom. Everyone leads forward, waiting to hear what he will say. Ah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yes, Your Honor, we are ready to proceed. And Mr. Montgomery, your opening statement, please. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my grandmother was a simple woman, born on a farm. She believed it was a man's divine right to benefit from the bounty of nature go wad before, put before us. If we were to live in the topsy-turvy world, Mr. Benson imagines, j -j just think of what it would mean. Maybe I would have to negotiate with the silkworm for the elastic in my britches. Talking B, how do we know this isn't some sort of holographic motion picture capture Hollywood wizardry? They could be using laser beams, robotics, ventriloquism, cloning, for all we know. He could be on steroids. 
Mr. Benson. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, there's no trickery here. I'm just an ordinary bee, and as a bee, honey's pretty important to me. It's important to all bees. We invented it. We make it. And we protect it with our lives. Unfortunately, there are some people in the room who think they can take whatever they want from us because we're the little guys. And what I'm hoping is that after this is all over, you'll see how by taking our honey, you're not only taking away everything we have, but everything we are. Vanessa smiles and silently claps as the bees in the courtroom are moved by his words. Back at their house, Barry's parents are watching on TV. Oh, I wish you would dress like that all the time. So nice. Call your first witness. So, Mr. Kloss Vander Hayden of Honey Farms. Pretty big company you have there. I suppose so. And I see you also own Honey Burton and Hanron. Yes, these are the provided beekeepers for our farms. Beekeeper. I find that to be a very disturbing term. I have to say, I don't imagine you employ any bee fears, do you? Um, no, no. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. No. No, because you don't free bees. You keep bees. And not only that, it seems you thought a bear would be an appropriate image for a jar of honey. Well, yeah, they're very lovable creatures. Uh, Yogi Bear, Fozzy Bear. Oh, oh Build-A-Bear. Yeah, you mean like this. Vanessa and a man enter. Guiding a giant grizzly bear restrained by a collar with the chains attached to both sides. They bring him in front of Vander Hayden. The bear lunges at him and roars. Bears kill bees, and how would you like this big hairy creature? <laughs> I read that wrong. Let's start over. Bears kill bees. How would you like his big hairy head crashing through your living room, biting into your couch, spitting out your throw pillows? Rawr, rawr, rawr. Okay, that's enough. Take him away. Vincent stops roaring. He and the man depart without incident, leaving Vander Hayden trembling with the judge glaring at him and Leighton angrily growling himself. Later, Barry questions another witness. So, Mr. Sting, thank you for being here. Your name intrigues me, I have to say. Where have I heard it before? Uh, I was, in, it was with a band called The Police. Yeah, but you've never been a police officer of any kind, have you? Uh, no, I haven't. No, you haven't. And so, here we have yet another example of bee culture being casually stolen by a human for nothing more than prance about stage name. Oh, please. Have you ever been stung, Mr. Sting? Because I'm feeling a little stung. Sting, or should I say, Mr. Gordon M. Summer? <gasps> The jury gasps. That's not his real name, you idiots! Later on, Barry is questioning another witness. Reading from the base of the statue the witness is holding, Mr. Leota, first may I offer my belated congratulations on your Emmy win for a guest spot on ER in 2005. Thank you, thank you. He laughs maniacally. I also see your resume that you're devilishly handsome, but with a churning inner turmoil that's always ready to blow. I enjoy what I do. Is that a crime? Not yet it isn't. But is this what it comes to for you, Mr. Leota? Exploiting tiny helpless bees so you don't have to rehearse your part and learn your lines, sir? Watch it, Benson. I could blow right now. This isn't a good fella. This is a bad fella. Ray Leota, suddenly upset, tries to smash Barry with his Emmy statue. Why doesn't someone just step on this little creep and we can all go home? You're all thinking it? Say it. Order, order in this courtroom. Order, I say. Mr. Leota, please sit down. The reaction from the press is harsh. The headline of the New York Telegram has Subi. The New York Post reads, Bees to humans, buzz off. And the Daily Variety reports, Studio dumps Leota Project, slams door on unlawful entry too. That evening, in Vanessa's apartment. Well, I just think that was awfully nice of that bear to pitch in like that. I'm telling you, I think the jury's on our side. Are we really doing everything right, you know, legally? I'm a florist. Right, right. Well, here's to a great team. To a great team. Uh, both Toast and Ken enters the apartment. Ken, very passive-aggressively, says, Well, hello. Oh, Ken, hello. I didn't think you were coming. No, I was just late. I tried to call, but the battery... I didn't want all this to go to waste, so I called Barry. Luckily, he was free. Yeah. Oh, that was lucky. Well, there's still a little time... Uh, still a little left. I could heat it up. Yeah, heat it up, sure. Whatever. Ken glares at Barry as Barry cuts his food. So I hear you're quite a tennis player. I'm not much for the game myself. I find the ball a little grabby. Ken scowls. That's where I usually sit. Right there. Vanessa from the kitchen. Ken, Barry was looking at your resume and he agreed with me that eating with chopsticks isn't really a special skill. Ken to Barry. You think I don't see what you're doing? Hey, look, I know how hard it is try trying to find the right job. We have certainly, we certainly have that in common. Do we? Well, bees have 100% employment, of course, but we do jobs like taking the crud out. That's just what I was thinking about doing. Ken reaches for a knife. Oh, no, not the knife. Not the knife. Oh, no. I accidentally zoomed in on the page and I lost my spot. Let's see. Um, 
from the kitchen. Vanessa says, Ken, I let Barry borrow your razor for his fuzz. I hope that was all right. Ken hits his head on the table as he straightens back up, then presses the apple cider bottle against his temple to soothe it. I'm going to go drain the old stinger. Yeah, you do that. Barry flies a couple of loops in front of Ken as he heads to the bathroom, causing Ken to shake the bottle and get cider in his eyes. Barry grabs a small section of Variety magazine as he goes. Ken slaps his head, accidentally hitting his bruise. Huh, look at that. Tears off a small corner of Variety magazine as he goes in. As Barry finishes up and washes his hands, Ken enters carrying a large magazine. You know, you know, I've just about had it with your little mind games. What's that? Italian Vogue. He curls the magazine tight. Mamma mia, that's a lot of pages. It's a lot of ads. Remember what Van said. Why is your life any more valuable than mine? That's funny. I just can't seem to recall that. He whacks Barry with the magazine. He misses and knocks everything off the vanity. He grabs a can of air freshener. I think something stinks in here. He sprays at Barry. I love the smell of flowers. Yeah, how do you like the smell of flames? He lights the stream. Not as much as Barry screams. Barry flies in a circle. Ken, trying to stay with him, spins in place. There are flames outside the bathroom door. Ken slips on the Italian Vogue, falls backwards into the shower, pulling down the shower curtain. The can hits him in the head, followed by the shower curtain rod and the rubber duck. Ken reaches back, grabs the handheld shower head. He whips around looking for Barry. There's a water bug near the drain. Water bug, not taking sides. Barry is on the toilet tank. He comes out from behind a shampoo bottle wearing a chapstick cap as a helmet. Ken, look at me, I'm wearing a chapstick hat. This is pathetic. Ken is turning the hand shower nozzle from gentle to turbo to lethal. I've got issues. Ken fires the water at Barry, knocking him onto the toilet. The items from the vanity, emery board, lipstick, eye curler, etc., are on the toilet seat. Ken looks down at Barry. Well, 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 royal flush. You're bluffing. Am I? Ken flushes the toilet handle. Barry screams and starts circling the drain. He reaches out and grabs the emery board and starts riding it like a surfboard. Barry steers the wave out of the toilet bowl and splashes Ken in the face. Surf's up, dude. Ew, poo water. Woohoo, landing on the toilet seat. The bowl is gnarly. Except for those dirty yellow rings, Ken picks up the toilet brush and prepares to swing down on Barry. Vanessa bursts through the door and interrupts. Kenneth, what are you doing? You know what? I don't even like honey. I don't eat it. We need to talk. He's just a little bee, and he happens to be the nicest bee I've met in a long time. Long time? What are you talking about? Are there other bugs in your life? No, but there are other things bugging me in life, and you're one of them. Fine. Talking bees, no yogurt night. My nerves are fried from riding on this emotional roller coaster. Goodbye, Ken. Ugh. Who? Ken exits, then re-enters frames. And for your information, I prefer sugar-free artificial sweeteners made by man. I'm sorry I'm all about that. Re uh, Ken re-enters again. I know it got, it's got an aftertaste. I like it. And he leaves for the last time. Always felt there was some kind of barrier between Ken and me. I couldn't overcome it. Oh, well. Are you going to be okay for the trial tomorrow? Oh, I believe Mr. Montgomery's about out of ideas. Back in the courtroom. We would like to call Mr. Barry Benson B to the stand. Now that's a good idea. You can really see why he's considered one of the very best lawyers. Uh, yeah. Leighton, you've got to weave some magic with this jury or it's going to be all over. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Gamble. The only thing I have to do is turn this jury around is to remind them of what they don't like about bees. You got the tweezers. Are you allergic? Only to losing, son. Only to losing. Mr. Benson B, I'll ask you what I think we'd all like to know. What exactly is your relationship to that woman? He points to Vanessa. We're friends. Good friends. Yes. How good? What? Do you live together? Wait a minute. This isn't about, are you her little bed bug? Hey, that's not the kind of... I've seen a bee documentary or two. Now, from what I understand, doesn't your queen give birth to all the bee children in the hive? Yeah, but so those aren't even your real parents. Oh, Barry. Yes, they are getting increasingly angry. Hold me back. You're an unillegitimate bee, aren't you, Benson? He's denouncing bees. And don't you all date your cousins? Oh, Objection! I'm gonna pincushion this guy. Adam escapes Vanessa's grasp and flies at Leighton. Leighton and Gamble wink to each other. Oh, don't! It's what he wants! Adam sinks his stinger into Leighton's ample rear, then falls to the floor. Again, actual audio description, description from Netflix highlighting ample rear. Oh, I'm hit! Oh, lordy, I'm hit! Order, order, please! The venom, the venom is coursing through my veins! Mr. Montgomery! I have been felled by a winged beast of destruction, you see. You can't treat them like equals. They're striped savages. Stinging's the only thing they know. It's their way. Adam, stay with me. I can't feel my legs. 
Take it easy. Oh, what angel of mercy will come forward to suck the poison from my heaving buttocks? Please, I will have order in this court. Order, order, please. Later in a hospital bed, we see Adam recovering. A TV is on with the reporter saying, the case of the honeybees versus the human race took a pointed turn against the bees yesterday when one of their legal teams stung Leighton T. Montgomery. Now here's Don with the five day. A nurse leads Barry who's carrying a flower to the room. Barry thanks the nurse as she leaves. We see Adam in the bed with an intravenous line hooked up to an IV bag of honey. Hey buddy, hey, is there much pain? Yeah, taps the medical button. I, uh, I blew the whole case, didn't I? Oh, it doesn't matter. The important thing is you're alive. You could have died. I'd be better off dead. Look at me. He reveals a plastic sword sandwich pick in place of his stinger. You got it from the cafeteria. They got it from downstairs in a tuna sandwich. Look, there's a little celery still on it. What was that like to sting somebody? I can't explain it. It was all adrenaline and then ecstasy. All right. You think that was all a trap? Of course. I'm sorry I flew us right into this. What were we thinking? Look at us. We're just a couple of bugs in this world. What do you think the humans will do to us if they win? I don't know. I heard they put the roaches in motels. That doesn't sound so bad. Adam, they check in and they don't check out. Oh my. Smoke wafts in and Adam begins coughing. Say, could you get a nurse to close that window? Why? The smoke. Bees don't smoke. Right. Bees don't smoke. Has a realization. Bees don't smoke, but some bees are smoking. Adam, that's it. That's our case. It is? It's not over? No, get up, get dressed. I've got to go somewhere. You get back to that court and stall. Stall any way you can. Back at court, Adam holds an origami boat. And assuming you've done twenty step 29 correctly, you're ready for the tub. Everyone in the courtroom has folded their own origami boat. Mr. Flamen, yes, yes, your honor. Where is the rest of your team? Well, your honor, it's interesting, you know. Bees are trained to fly kind of haphazardly, and as a result, quite often, we don't make very good time. I actually once heard a pretty funny story about a be Leighton rolling forward in a giant baby walker with a neck brace on. Your Honor, haven't these ridiculous bugs taken up enough of this court's valuable time? How much longer are we going to allow these absurd shenanigans to go on? They have presented no compelling evidence to support their charges against my clients, who have all run perfectly legitimate businesses. I move for a complete dismissal for this entire case. Mr. Flayman, I'm afraid I'm going to have to consider Mr. Montgomery's motion. But you can't. We have a terrific case. Where's your proof? Where's the evidence? Show me the smoking gun. Barry bursting through the courtroom doors. Hold it, Your Honor. You want a smoking gun? Here's your smoking gun. Vanessa enters, presenting a bee smoker. What is that? It's a bee smoker. What's this? This harmless little contraption? This couldn't hurt a fly, let alone a bee. Leighton waves the bee smoker around, and the gases pour out towards the bee in the gallery, causing them all to collapse. Members of the jury, look at what has happened to the bees who have never been asked, smoking or not. Is this what nature intended for us? To be forcibly addicted to these smoke machines and man-made wooden slap work camps? Living out our lives as honey slaves to the white man. A black lawyer moves away from his white partners. What are we going to do? He's playing the species card. Ladies and gentlemen, please free these bees. Everyone in the courtroom starts chanting, Free the bees! Free the bees! Free the bees! Free the bees! The court finds in favor of the bees. Vanessa, we won. Yay, I knew you could do it. High five. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm okay, Vanessa, but do you know what this means? All the honey is finally going to belong to the bees. Now we won't have to work so hard all the time. This is an unholy perversion of the balance of nature, Benson. You will regret this, reporters crowd Barry. Barry, how much honey do you think is out there? All right, one at a time. Barry, who, what, who are you wearing? My, swelf is, my sweater is Ralph Lauren, and I have no pants. Adam to Vanessa, what if Montgomery's right? What do you mean? We've been living the bee a long time. A long, long time, Vanessa. 27 million years. Later during the montage. Congratulations on your first victory. What are you going to demand as a settlement? Well, first, we're going to demand a complete shutdown of all bee work camps. Then we want back the honey that's ours to begin with every last drop. We demand an end to glorification of the bear as anything more than a filthy, smelly, big-headed, bad breath stink machine. I believe we're all aware of what they do in the woods. A sniper aims at Winnie the Pooh holding a pot of honey. Wait for my signal. Take him out. A tranquilizer dart hits the bear. He'll have nausea for a few hours, then he'll be fine. And we will no longer tolerate B negative nicknames. Agents arrest Sting. Sting. But it's just a prance about stage name. 
unnecessary inclusion of honey and bogus health products and la di da human tea time snack garnishments. Agents arrest an old woman drinking tea, pinning her down. I can't breathe. Editor's note. Oh God, wait, this came out in 2007. Uh, the wiki is in the link to below. That is exactly what is put in here. Uh, a helicopter lowers a large drum of honey onto a scaffold. Bring it in, boys. ATFH agents hook up the honey drum to Barry's hive and start pumping the honey in. Inside, the honey vat quickly overflows. Mr. Buzzwell, we just passed three cups and there's gallons more coming. I think we need to shut down. Shut down? We've never had to shut down. Going to a mic. Shut down honey production. Stop making honey. Two bees go to a control panel and insert keys. Turn your keys, sir. They obey, and all the factory machines come to a halt. What do we do now? Everybody looks around blankly. Cannonball, woo, dives into the honey. General into his mic. We're shutting down honey production. Mission abort. Aborting pollination and nectar detail. Returning to base. Back at the hive, all of the bees are lounging around, sunning themselves. The factory is, is deserted. Cuts outside, flowers in the park wither away. Time lapse shows the grass, flowers, and trees in the park turn gray and dead. At her shop, Vanessa scrawls, no more flowers on a sign at the door. Back at the factory, Barry runs up a flight of stairs to an office suite where Adam is packing up his box of belongings. Adam, you wouldn't believe how much honey was out there. Oh yeah? What's going on around here? Where is everybody? Are they out celebrating? No, they're just home. They don't know what to do. They're laying out. They're sleeping in. I heard your Uncle Carl was on his way to San Antonio with the cricket. At least we got our honey back it. <laughs> honey back it? Cyrus, the word is back. Anyways. Yeah, but sometimes I think, so what if the humans liked their honey? Who wouldn't? It's the greatest thing in the world. I was excited to be part of making it. This was my new desk. This is my new job. I just wanted to do it really well. And now, and now I can't. Adam places the box in the storage area, then leaves. Barry, now alone, looks around the desolate factory. Later, he visits Vanessa. I don't understand why they're not happy. We have so much now. I thought their lives would be better. They're doing nothing. It's amazing. Honey really changes people. You don't have any idea what's going on, do you? What, what did you want to show me? This. She brings him to her dying rooftop garden. What happened here? That's not the half of it. She points him towards a park full of dying plants and trees. Oh, no. Oh, my. They're all wilting. Doesn't look very good, does it? No. And whose fault do you think that is? You know, I'm gonna guess bees. Bees? Specifically me. I guess I didn't think that bees not needing to make honey would affect all these other things. And it's not just flowers, fruits, vegetables. They all need bees. Well, that's our whole SAT test right there. So you take away the produce that affects the entire animal kingdom. And then of course, the human species. Oh, so if there's no more pollination, it could all just go south here, couldn't it? And I know this is also partly my fault. How about a suicide pact? How would we do it? I'll sting you, you step on me. That just kills you twice. Right, right. Listen, Barry, sorry, I gotta get going. Barry to himself. I had to open my mouth and talk. Barry notices that Vanessa has left. Vanessa? Barry flies down and sees Vanessa getting into a cab. Vanessa, why are you leaving? Where are you going? To the final tournament of Rose's Parade in Pasadena. They've moved it up to this weekend because all the flowers are dying. It's the last chance I'll ever have to see it. Vanessa, I just want to say I'm sorry. I never meant for it to turn out like this. I know, me neither. The taxi drives away. Terminator Roses. Roses can't do sports. Wait a minute. Roses, 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 Vanessa. Barry flies off and catches up to the taxi. He knocks on the window. Barry? Roses are flowers. Yes, they are. F flowers, bees, pollen. I know. That's why this is the last parade. Maybe not. Could you ask him to slow down? Vanessa to the taxi driver. Could you slow down? The taxi stops and Barry flies in, falling in the change box. Barry! Okay, I made a huge mistake. This is a total disaster and it's all my fault. Yeah, it kind of is. I've ruined the planet and I wanted to help you with your flower shop. Instead, I've made it worse. Actually, it's completely closed down. I thought maybe you were remodeling. Nonetheless, I have a better idea and it's greater than all my previous great ideas combined. I don't want to hear it. All right, here's what I'm thinking. They have the roses. The roses have the pollen. I know every bee, plant, and flower bud in this park. All we gotta do is get what they've got back here with what we've got. Bees, park, pollen, flowers, repollination across the nation. Barry later in California. All right, Tournament of Roses, Pasadena, California. They've got nothing but flowers, floats, and cotton candy. Security will be tight. Vanessa says, I have an idea. 
in an inspector trench coat, flashing a badge at the guard. Vanessa Bloom, FTD, official floral business. Oh, it's real. Sorry, ma'am. That's a nice brooch, by the way, pointing to a suspiciously B-shaped pin on her coat. Brooch? I think it's supposed to say brooch, but it says brooch. Uh, thank you. It was a gift. Then, once we're inside, we just pick the right float. Vanessa excitedly says, how about the princess and the pea? Yeah, I could be the princess, and yeah, I think you could be the pea. I got it. Barry flies up, dressed as a pea. Sorry, I'm late. Where should I sit? What are you? I believe I'm the pea. The pea is supposed to be under the mattresses. Not in this fairy tale, sweetheart. I'm going to go talk to the marshal. You do that. This whole parade is a fiasco. Vanessa moves the 15-foot ladder away as the princess was about to step on it. She plummets to the ground and lands out of frame. Vanessa takes her place as the float princess. Let's see what this baby will do, he hotwires the engine. The float official says, hey, what are you doing? Then all we do is blend in with traffic without arousing suspicion. They speed away and weave through traffic recklessly. And once we're at the airport, there's no stopping us. Stop, security. Did you and your insect pack <laughs> your own float? Uh, yes. Has this float been in your possession the entire time? Yes. Would you remove your shoes and everything in your pockets? Can you remove your stinger, sir? Uh, that's just part of me. I know, I'm just having some fun. Enjoy your flight. The float is all rolled up into a tube and is loaded onto the plane as luggage. Then if we're lucky, we'll have just enough pollen to do the job. On the plane, Barry uses a laptop and makes a graph by pushing random buttons. The screen says, repollination possible. Can you believe how lucky we are? We have just enough pollen to do the job. I think this is going to work, Vanessa. It's got to work. Over the intercom, attention passengers, this is Captain Scott. I'm afraid we have a bit of bad weather in the New York area and looks like we're going to be experiencing a couple of hours of delay. Barry, these are cut flowers with no water. They'll never make it. I've got to get up there and talk to these guys. Be careful. Get it, B? Barry knocking on the cabin door. Hey, can I get some help with Sky Mall Magazine? I like to order the talking inflatable nose and ear hair trimmer. The flight attendant opens the door and Barry sneaks past by blending in with a black and yellow striped caution sign. Excuse me, Captain. I'm in a real situation here. Uh, what did you say, Hal? I didn't say anything. Uh, B! No, no, don't freak out. There's a chance my entire species... The pilot grabs a handheld vacuum cleaner, turns it on, and lunges it at, his, at Barry around the head of his co-pilot. What are you doing? The vacuum sucks up the co-pilot's toupee, jamming it. Uh-oh. Landing on the co-pilot's head? Wait a minute. I'm an attorney. Who's an attorney? Don't move. The pilot swings and hits the co-pilot in the head, knocking him unconscious. His head falls on a button, deploying a life raft a life raft that inflates rapidly into the captain, knocking him out too. Oh, Barry. Cut back to the cabin where Vanessa is still using the laptop. Good afternoon, passengers. This is your captain speaking. Would a Miss Vanessa Bloom in 24B please report to the cockpit? And please hurry! Vanessa heads over to the cockpit and sees the unconscious pilot and co-pilot. What happened here? I tried to talk to them. But then there was a dust buster, a toupee, a life raft exploded. Now one's bald, one's in a boat, and they're both unconscious. Is that another B joke? No, no one's flying the play. plane. This is JFK Control Tower, Flight 356. What's your status? This is Vanessa Bloom. I'm a florist from New York. Where's the pilot? He's unconscious, and so is the co-pilot. Not good. Is there anyone on board who has flight experience? As a matter of fact, there is. Who's that? Barry Benson. From the honey trial? Oh, great. Vanessa, this is nothing more than a big metal bee. It's got giant wings, huge engines. I can't fly a plane. Why not? Isn't John Travolta a pilot? Yes. How hard could it be? Wait a minute. Barry, we're headed into some lightning. At Barry's house, Adam stuffs his face with whipped cream. A TV plays in the background when a sudden news report comes in. This is Bob Bumble. We have some late breaking news from JFK Airport where a very suspenseful scene is developing. Barry Benson, fresh off a stunning legal victory... Dutch Berry is now attempting to land a plane loaded with people, flowers, and an incapacitated flight crew. Flowers? Well, we have an electrical storm in the area and two individuals at the controls of a jumbo jet with absolutely no flight experience. Just a minute, Mr. Ditchwater. There's a honeybee on that plane? I'm quite familiar with Mr. Benson's work and his no-account compadres. Haven't they done enough damage already? But isn't he one your, But isn't he your only hope right now? Come on, technically a bee shouldn't be able to fly at all. The wings are too small, their bodies are too big. Hey, hold on a second. Haven't we heard this a million times? The surface area of the wings and body mass doesn't make sense. Get this on the air. You got it. Stand by, we're going live. Mr. Ditchwater, the way we work may be a mystery to you because making honey takes a lot of bees doing a lot of small jobs. But let me tell you something about a small job. If you do it really well, it makes a big difference. More than we realized. 
to us, to everyone. That's why I want to get the bees back to doing what we do best, working together. That's the bee way. We're not made of jello. We get behind a fellow, black and yellow. Hello. Barry guides Vanessa to fly the plane according to his movements. Left, right, down, hover. Hover? Forget hover. You know what? This isn't so hard. Beep, 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 beep. She pretend beeps the steering column. Suddenly, lightning strikes the plane, frying the controls. Barry, what happened? Uh, wait a minute. I think we were on autopilot that whole time. Uh, that may have been helping me. And now we're not. Vanessa pouting. Well, then it turns it off. I cannot fly a plane. Back at the hive, General Lou assembles the squadrons of pollen jacks. All of you, let's get behind this fellow. Move it out. Back on the plane. Our only chance is if I do what I would do and you copy me with the wings of the plane. You don't have to yell. I'm not yelling. We happen to be in a lot of trouble here. It's very hard to concentrate with that panicky tone in your voice. It's not a tone. I'm panicking. I don't think I can do this. Vanessa, pull yourself together. Listen to me. You have to snap out of it. Barry slaps Vanessa. <gasps> you snap out of it. Vanessa slaps Barry, which should have killed him. <laughs> you snap out of it. Slap. You snap out of it. Slap. You snap out of it. Slap. The two continue to slap each other instead of fly the plane, and the plane starts dipping. The B squadrons emerge from the clouds and get on the underside of the plane, supporting its weight on their shoulders. You snap out of it. Slap. You snap out of it. Slap. Hold it. Why? Come on, it's my turn. How is the plane flying? I don't know. Barry's antenna starts ringing. Hello? Hey, Benson, have you got any flowers for a happy occasion in there? The pollen jocks. They do get behind a fellow, black and yellow. Hello. All right, you two. What do you say we drop this tin can on the blacktop? What blacktop? Where? I can't see anything. Can you? No, nothing. It's all cloudy. Come on. You got to think. B, Barry. Down on the tarmac. Adam leads a large group of bees in chanting, thinking B, and performing synchronized arm movements. Thinking B, thinking B, thinking B, thinking B. Wait a minute. I think I'm feeling something. What? I don't know, but it's strong and it's pulling me, like a 27 million year old instinct. Bring the nose of the plane down. Thinking B, thinking B, thinking B, thinking B. What in the world is on the tarmac? Get some lights on that. Floodlight. Floodlights point to reveal the bees have assembled into the pattern of a giant pulsing black and yellow flower on the tarmac. Vanessa, aim for the flower. Okay. Cut the engines. Cut the engines. We're going in on bee power. Ready, boys? Affirmative. Good, good. Easy now. That's it. Land on that flower. Ready, boys? I just clicked on something else. Am I stupid? Give me full reverse. Spin it around. The plane hovers around a parked plane that has a flower logo. No, not that flower. The other flower. Which flower? That flower. I'm aiming at the flower. Editor's note. Wait a minute. Didn't they cut engines? How is Vanessa steering anything? Moving on. That's a fat guy in a flowered shirt. I mean, the giant black and yellow flower pulsating made of millions of bees. Pull forward, nose down, bring your tail up, rotate around it. This is insane, Barry. This is the only way I know how to fly. Am I cuckoo cachoo or is this plane flying in an insect-like pattern? Get your nose in there. Don't be afraid of it. Smell it. Full reversal. Easy. Just drop it. Be a part of it. Aim for the center. Now drop it in. Drop it in, woman. The plane lands safely in the middle of the flower pattern as the bees disperse. Countless flowers empty out of the cargo hold. In the cabin, the passengers glance around impatiently as they wait to be let off. Passenger says, come on already. Bells chimes and they all spring up and get their luggage. Vanessa descends an emergency slide. Barry, we did it. You taught me how to fly. Yes, no high five. Right. Barry at work. Did you see the giant flower? What giant flower? Where? Oh, of course I saw the flower. That was genius, man. Genius. Thank you. But we're not done yet. Barry flies up on top to the plane to address the massive throng of bees on the tarmac. Listen, everyone. This runway is covered with the last pollen from the last flowers available anywhere on Earth. That means this is our last chance. We're the only ones who make honey, pollinate flowers, and dress like this. If we're going to survive as, a, survive as a species, this is our moment. So, what do you say? Are we going to be bees or just Museum of Natural History keychains? We're bees! Keychain! Then everyone, follow me, except keychain. Hold on, Barry here. You've earned this. Places a pollen jock jacket on Barry and gives him a helmet, and the three pollen jocks cheer while Vanessa gives him a thumbs up. Yay. I'm a pollen jock, and it's a perfect fit. All I gotta do are the sleeves. The pollen jocks toss Barry a nectar pack. Oh yeah. Barry's mom proudly, that's our Barry. Barry's dad nods proudly in agreement. The bees begin their task of collecting the pollen. As shell crows, here comes the sun starts playing in the background. Then the bees travel with their pollen to the city park. 
Barry breaks off from the pack and dusts the dying flowers outside of Vanessa's flower shop with pollen, instantly rejuvenating them to their former glory. Editor's note, in case it wasn't obvious, that's not how it works in the slightest. In the park, the pollen jocks began pollinating the fields with a wake of pollen, restoring the plant life instantly. Mom, the bees are back. Cut to the inside of the hive, Adam is putting on the finger-shaped Krellman headgear. If anybody needs to make a call, now's the time. I got a feeling we'll be working late tonight. The high factory is once again buzzing with activity. Cut to the flower shop. The sign now reads, Vanessa and Barry, flowers, honey, legal advice. Vanessa says, here's your change. Have a great afternoon. Yes, can I help who's next? Would you like some honey with that? It's be approved. Don't forget these. Behind a door in the shop labeled insects at law, Barry sits in an office listening to a cow's pleas. Milk, cream, cheese, it's all me. I don't see a nickel. Sometimes I just feel like a piece of meat. I had no idea. Barry, I'm sorry. Have you got a moment? Barry says to the cow, would you excuse me? My mosquito associate here will be able to help you. Sorry, I'm late. He's a lawyer too? Ma'am, I was already a blood-sucking parasite. All I needed was a briefcase. Vanessa to the customer says, have a great afternoon and turns to Barry. Barry, I, I just got this huge tulip order for a wedding and I can't get them anywhere. No problem, Vanny. Just leave it to me. You're a lifesaver, Barry. Can I help who's next? Who's next? All right, scramble jocks. It's time to fly. Vanessa says, thank you, Barry. Best part of the movie right here. Ken walks by and sees the sign that says, Vanessa and Barry, flowers, honey, legal advice, and becomes disgusted. Oh, that bee is living my life. Ken's friend says, let it go, Kenny. When will this nightmare end? Let it all go. Barry says, beautiful day to fly, as the pollen jock replies, sure is. Between you and me, I was dying to get out of that office. Fade to credits.